Welcome back to The Breakfast. And now let's uh, share with you things that happened today in history. I'm going back to the year 1971. It's actually a very brief um, um, event, but it's uh, something from a group called the Weather on the Ground. And so in 1971, on this day, a bomb exploded in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., costing an estimated uh, $300,000 in damage. But, of course, uh, luckily hurting nobody. Uh, there were no casualties from that bomb except the building. Uh, the group called themselves the Weather on the Ground, and they claim credit for uh, the bomb explosion. And so this is, you know, the interesting part about this group. They were a group that were mostly protesting certain levels of injustice, um, in the United States at that time, and their way of protesting injustice was through arson and bombing, which you know doesn't you know make a lot of sense if you look at it. But you know that was the way that they carried out their activities at that time. Also, uh, they were a radical faction of uh, Students for Democratic Society, something called SDC. Uh, a man called Bill Ayers, so, um, a retired college professor, then was. Uh, uh, known as the leader of the group. And if you remember in 2008, for those who remember, there, were, there was a little um, controversy over his relationship with uh, former President Barack Obama. Um, Obama was criticized for being you know, friends with that person based on who Bill Ayers was known um, as. The weatherman advocated violent means to transform the American society, and their primary tools, of course, I earlier mentioned, include arson and bombing. So at that time, a bomb was planted in the bathroom of the Senate side of the Capitol building, and it went off, causing hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. Um, looking a little bit back um, in history, it wasn't the first time that uh, bombing was used to make a political statement uh, some time ago or sometime earlier. There was also um, a bomb, I think, that exploded in 1912, I believe, also in the United States by a totally different group that, of course, were also using the same tactics or using the same um, a narrative to carry out their um, atrocities, bombings, arsons, shootings, and, and the likes. So on this day, 1971, the weather on the ground bomb exploded. Why are you smiling, Annette Felix? Um, okay, first of all, I think uh, this particular issue, 19... 19 what? 1971. 1971. Yeah. Before 1971, there were about five attacks on the U.S. Capitol. After 1971, five other attacks. They had used fires. They had used bombs. They had used dynamites. They had even tried to assassinate a president right there in the U.S. Capitol. And I think the irony for me, like you mentioned earlier, is that an anti-war group used a bomb yes. to make a point. Absolutely. How ironical. <laughs> Rather were, than use dialogue. They, they were uh, protesting at that time the uh, invasion of Laos, uh, which was going on at that time. And yes. So, um, it, what I said earlier, it made absolutely no, no sense, sense. You know, to contradicting use yourself. violence to counter violence. <laughs> you know, but that, that was you know, what they were all about. Um, nobody was arrested, um, unfortunately, because nobody really, you know, was held responsible for it. Bill Ayers also wasn't held responsible, wasn't arrested, and he continued to live, you know, a really, really long life. The only time he became relevant again was uh, during uh, President Obama's, uh, former President Barack Obama's um, um, presidency. Of course, uh, they always, it's very similar to the time that he was criticized for wearing a brown suit, um, same way he was criticized for being friends with uh, Bill Ayers. But... That's really the history of, um, or the very little, you know, history with regards to weather on the ground. Um, group. Hmm. Interesting. I think this, this, these people should have taken a cue from, you know, Indian leader, uh, Indian leader Mahatma Gandhi. His own process of, of protesting was, I've forgotten the term, there's a term it was called, but he would stay, he would stand his ground, he wouldn't fight, go on hunger strikes and things like that. And he, you know, he, he eventually caused the change. Not uh, you Through doing a bomb, bomb and saying you're against <laughs> U.S. invasion of or, or U.S. military intervention in, uh, in Vietnam. Moving on to this day in history, 1st of March 1998. What happened today was that the movie Titanic became the first movie to gross over one billion naira world, one billion dollars worldwide. So Titanic was a three-hour, 15-minute movie released in 1997, a year earlier about the ship, the Titanic. Uh, the, the Titanic had sunk on her maiden voyage on April 15th, 1912. 
So on this day in history, this this movie had you know amassed so much money, you know, of over one billion dollars worldwide. The Titanic has gone down in history as the ship that was called unsinkable, and for more than a hundred years, you know, she's been you know an inspiration of both fiction, non-fiction. Yeah. You know, the movie uh, Titanic has won about eleven Oscars at the seventieth Academy Award, it including including Best Picture and Best Director for Cameron. It was such a remarkable historical event, the sinking of the Titanic, because we saw that some of the wealthiest people in the UK, in Europe, they wanted to migrate to the US. They were heading for New York and uh, there were uh, you know, thousands of people on the ship, but the Titanic carried only 20 lifeboats, which was enough for just about half the number of people that were on board. The Titanic, you know, it hit a, an iceberg, it split into, into two, and uh, you know, we saw how many people died, and about 73 years after that disaster, the sink, sinking of the Titanic, uh, you know, the, the, wreck, the wreck of that ship was found by the United States Navy. And it took just two hours, and 40 minutes for that ship to sink 15th of April 1912 and, two uh, hours yes two hours Ooh. 40 minutes just about just about three hours for that um, for that ship to so over to time sink. you know uh, two, two things I'll just quickly mention on the side over time you know I've gotten to you know uh, people have you know put out pictures of the Titanic and then modern day you know um, uh, ships and you know it, it's sad to see that it wasn't as big as people had described there are a lot more bigger you know um, um, ships that are you know currently in, in use and of course you know traveling all around the world that's one and then second is you cannot say this story without giving kudos to james cameron himself yes he has been the person or the you know director behind some of the um, world's biggest grossing movies ever terminator the very first one in the 80s terminator 2 also and um um avatar also mm. you know which also broke massive massive records um, um with regards to earning so yes. so you can't you can't leave him out of the picture he is phenomenal you know and is he's someone who has broken extreme records with regards to movies Indeed. So that's what happened today in history, 1st of March 1998. The movie Titanic that, you know, was released a year earlier, you know, grossed about 1 billion US dollars. I'm happy for Funke Akindele, you know. Um, On more Ghetto de Saga? Yes, you know, because we're, we're starting to see Nigerian movies also start to hit um, certain you know, um, financial levels that we've never imagined before, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, it must be really, really interesting um, seeing the possibilities that, that, that exist with Nollywood, the possibilities that exist with um, um, financial capabilities, basically, that mm -hmm. exist in Nollywood. Um, you might need some investors, you might need, you know, a, lots, you know, of funding, lots of funding, no but there's a possibility of hitting 500 million naira, maybe a billion naira. And I'm looking forward to when a movie breaks that record of hitting a billion naira. You know, there's the parts of piracy that we still need to continue to yes. fight. There's the parts where we need to decide whether we want them to be cinema movies or we want them to be on Netflix or we want them to be um, on you know, DVDs. sold on DVDs. Well, People they, still watch those. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So it, we, we, need, have them we need to figure all of that out to, to ensure that every single penny that is possible from a movie in Nigeria can be gotten and people can be paid better. Actors and actresses and can be paid better. And the money goes to the people who actually put in the work. Absolutely. The pirates, Absolutely. So. so congrats to um, the crew of um, Titanic. It's one of the movies also that brought out Leonardo DiCaprio as yes, a phenomenal Yes, he was actor. so young at um, that time, you know. Anyway, so yes, that's it uh, today in history. And then you went back to the U.S. to give us a history of the U.S. Uh, capital invasion. All right. Stay with us. When we come back, we're bringing, uh, of course, uh, back Libros Oshoma. He will be joining us to speak once again on the Zamf the Jangebe uh, kidnap. 317 girls, controversy of whether you know they're released or they're not released yet. What will it take, really, to bring these girls back home? And what is the responsibility of the Nigerian government at this time? That comes up next.